Welcome to Bowman Gray Stadium, the historic quarter mile oval here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I'm your host, Matthew Dillner. Join with me, Jesse Punch, up here in the booth, and we are about to see a show. <laughs> that is absolutely right, Matthew. Let me just say, first of all, I am thrilled to be back here at Bowman Gray. Eighth week of racing. It is winding down, and things are about to get really interesting as these championships uh, come ahead. And we're going to set the stage for you tonight. We have a street stock main event. You see those street stocks on the track right now. Then we'll have twin stadium, uh, excuse me, sportsman races. And then the big race of the night will be your 100 lap modified main event. We'll have two stadium stock races. And, and guess what, folks? A demolition derby live on track pass. Yes, that's going to be awesome. Uh, like uh, Jesse said, event number eight of the 2021 season. And the street stocks are on the track now doing their pace laps, Jesse. We really do have an awesome slate of racing for us tonight. The Ground Pounders as the main event. We've got NASCAR Hall of Fame driver Bobby Labonte in the field. And like you said, I've, got, I've had the opportunity to see a lot of incredible racing here at Bowman Gray, but a demolition derby, <laughs> tonight's going to be fun. Sometimes we see that on the track here in general, <laughs> but tonight we'll have one on purpose. A night of champions as well. Jerry Cook, NASCAR Hall of Famer and one of the greatest modified racers of all time here tonight in the house. So is Paul Radford, fifth on the all-time win list here at Bowman Gray Stadium. Taylor Robbins on the pole for this street stock race in that number 40, the number 19 alongside Kenny Bost, Donnie Martin in the 96, Brian Wall in the 22, Austin Harris in the number 59, We'll line up fifth. Nate Gregg in the 28. He's a big player in this. The double zero of Kale Martin. The 98. You'll see a lot of him tonight. That is Billy Gregg, your point leader. We're about to go green here at Bowman Gray Stadium. Street stock action coming to you off of turn number four. Green flag is out at the stadium. Taylor Robbins, one of the talented female racers of this field, leads him down the backstretch. Kenny Post on the outside. Here comes Austin Harris. He's got the preferred lane on the bottom. The 19 just trying to get down low. That's tough to do here. The physicality will come into play. You watch Kale Martin right now as you see Taylor Robbins on your screen but now watch this right here the 19 trying to get down on the track can he do it no, he is losing spot after spot we have the yellow flag is out jesse somebody spun around here in turn number one I believe it's david creed Well, just two laps in, and one thing's for sure, the 40 car there <laughs> of Taylor Robbins has incredible speed tonight. She's going to be one to watch. The 0-2 of David Creed is spun in turn number one as the track crew motions the rest of this field by to his inside. Give you a look at some of the rest of the cars in the field uh, uh, as we look at this car. But uh, Brandon Butner is in this race. Brad Lewis, Nick Wall, Justin Cummings, Kevin Gilbert, Kendall Craig Hartless in the number 14 tonight. Jeremy Warren, you see, of course, David Creed spun there in that 02. He's from Mount Airy, North Carolina. Christian Joyce is in this event in the number one, as well as Connor Shaw in this 20 lap street stock race, 20 minute time limit. We're at a packed house here almost at Bowman Gray Stadium. The fans have been lining up outside Jesse and they're going to see a show tonight. No doubt about that. I love what you said about the demolition derby. I have a feeling we're going to see a little bit of uh, demolition before we even get to the final race of the night. Yeah, the tow truck is coming out right now. The Daniel Davis 24-hour towing is going to hook up to the back of Creed's street stock as we see the beautiful shot from the middle of turn one and number two here. That's going to give us a really unique perspective. That's where the action happens a lot of times here in that turn, uh, diving into that very narrow corner, a small piece of real estate, and the bottom line is king. 
I tell you, too, that view that you just saw from that camera angle is not far off from the view that some of the fans have yes. sitting down there in turn two. I mean, if you have an opportunity to come here to Bowman Gray and watch a race in person, you are just feet away from these cars. You can see the whites of their eyes as they go by. And if that's your favorite driver or maybe your least favorite driver, you have an opportunity to tell them and they're going to know about it. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, the, the, the vantage points as a fan from Bowman Gray Stadium is something that you just... I, I, everybody knows that knows me knows I'm a Bowman Gray nut. I love the history of the sport, of course. You know, that's kind of my career now. But this place here is so special. And it's because I liken this to a baseball person loving baseball history and loving to walk into the gates at Fenway or Wrigley Field. That's what you get here. You, you, you get the sensory of... You know, being a child at uh, Riverside Park or, or the bull rings like Islip Speedway or Indianapolis Speedrome, all these great bull rings around the country. And, uh, you know, you get that when you walk in here, that special feeling feeling that's the key word you feel it you feel the history you feel the environment there's no watching racing here at bowman gray you experience racing here yes at bowman gray that is a very wise way to put it jesse <laughs> uh because it's you're not coming here to watch a race you're coming here to watch an overall experience my wife erica is watching home with my young boy hudson and then our producers uh wife and his boy landon are watching right now as well so let's say say hello to them uh, on track pass i uh, love the fact that track pass is not just doing the touring events like last night if you're a track pass person you got a special treat you got to see the tour but just not just the tour the tour stafford motor speedway and ryan priest winning that race uh, what an unbelievable show on track pass last night but uh you know, you're getting a, a taste of one of the best grassroots racetracks in america where else do you see 17,000 fans sitting around a football field that they're racing I'd argue nowhere else, quite honestly. I think this is one of a kind, that's for sure. Oh, Randy Smith has put out the one to go. That means the lights are out on the modern Chevrolet pace car and Taylor Robbins getting a little bit of heat into her tires at the front of that field. As you look at that beautiful wide shot, restart lap four will be coming to the green this lap. The number 59 of Austin Harris young North Carolina driver and Kale Martin from Winston-Salem the local boy in third green flag back out down the front stretch Taylor Robbins on the point single file restart headed into turn number one they're single file throughout but then the 19 gets turned trouble in turn number one right now Kenny Bost a little bit of trouble that number 97 car Jeremy Warren sparks coming from underneath that car as he heads towards the pit area and yellow flag is back out again. The number 19 in the wall here in turn number three and four as well. Mass chaos. Tough night for the 19. Tough got night. Got stuck out there on the outside, couldn't quite get back in line there in those first two laps and is now struggling coming around turns three and four. I feel for him. That is a definite tough thing for a race car driver here. When you're hung on the outside here, your tongue's hanging out, and it's not an easy place to get around, but then you're trying to get your spotter to get you cleared and get down low, but everybody else behind you is trying to fill that hole. You know, we talked to Amber Lynn earlier in the, in the pit area, and she said something I thought was really interesting about these 20-lap races. She says, there is no time to hang back. Like you said, everyone is trying to fill that hole. Everyone is pounding this entire time knowing, I only have 20 laps or 20 minutes. So you're absolutely right about that. If you get stuck on the outside and you're in a position that you're not ideal with, there's not a lot of time to make it up. And that is a pretty cool thing about Bowman Gray Stadium. We're seeing that, of course, around tracks around this country is this place has female superstars, okay? Taylor Robbins, a second-generation driver. Um, her father, Brad Robbins, a modified racer for years. And then uh, in that sportsman race, uh, we will see a street stock graduate, Amber Lynn. She came from this division, and uh, she'll be running in that sportsman twins uh, race uh, later on tonight. She uh, won last week and crashed in the second race. Here we go. Lights are out of the pace car, and we're green flag racing. Randy Smith gives him the emerald cloth flying as the street stops. Barrel down into turn number one. 
Single file, nice and safe. Safety Sam here trying to get a few laps in as we've had a rough start to this street stock race. Taylor Robbins still on the point. Look at the speed of those cars going down the front straightaway here at the Madhouse. Right now, your top three as they run. Taylor Robbins in the lead. The number 59 of Austin Harris in second. Kale Martin uh, in third. Oh, it's trouble for the number 15. We've got a big spin here, and a yellow flag is out. Nick Wall with the spin. Hey, he kept it going. That was a la Danny Sullivan there. That was pretty impressive. That was incredibly impressive. I don't think they'll let him fade in like, and, and gradually get in where he just did but it you know based on that save i would say he almost deserves it 28 of nate greg caught the tail end of that he saw him in the infield yep. grass a little bit but i don't think there's any damage really there for nate, him nate greg the 28 car you'll see uh two black cars in this field uh that look kind of similar there's a 98 and there's a 28 uh, the 98 is Billy Gregg, the father champion here in the street stock division. And that number 28 is Billy Gregg. And uh, Billy, a young, talented kid. And uh, the father and son have kind of ruled over this division in the past two years. How cool is that? It's another testament again to the, uh, the family ties here at Bowman Gray. I like the fact that we've got the lights out in the pace car already. And we're going to try to push this program ahead. There's some ominous looking clouds headed this way and the flag on top of the flagpole here is blowing so we're hoping this weather splits around us and we can uh, show you a lot of racing so uh, this uh, program here and this staff here really runs a tight show not a lot of wasted time at Bowman Gray and that's evident by the green flag about to fly yellow flag is back out now as we have one little problem the modern Chevrolet pace car will uh, return to pace the field you said it, though. They're just ominous clouds right now. A few clouds yeah, never hurt fine. anybody. Yeah, clouds are nice. Yeah. You know, I'm okay with clouds. A replay you're looking at right here of this incident. And the number 15 of Nick Wall. Oh, a little contact there. Contact from the number 22. And that was, uh, oh, boy. I think he might be a little mad at that incident right there. And you saw Nate Gregg down on the bottom on the grass trying to avoid that brian wall from winston-salem north carolina using his front bumper there that's kind of a little a la bowman gray it's very a la bowman gray it's almost <laughs> you know, like he's raced here before yeah probably. <laughs> <laughs> he has green flag is back out and taylor robbins she's in the spot that everybody wants to be in right now at the front of this awesome field of street stocks at bowman gray stadium eight laps in to this event look at wall further back there making more contact we have another spin in turn number three the number 88 justin cummings has spun another winston-salem north carolina driver man we got yellow fever tonight seems like it a flat left rear on the side of that velocita number 88 machine i'll tell you what we could talk about a few good things here while we get set we have a hundred lap modified race coming up here oh yeah okay one of the cool storylines of that 100 lap modified race coming up is a guy that's slated to start third but his brother qualified the car <laughs> jesse why don't you tell me what's going on with danny bone and the bad to the bone busy day he's had well what time is it it's about 8 12 danny bone was is expected to uh, get here around 805 i believe Let's and see that's if he's because here. He was off running the truck race earlier today at Watkins Glen and finished 28th, hopped on the plane, flew down here, and is hoping to, was hoping to make it by qualifying. Wasn't the case, but hopefully he'll make it by race time. Yeah, 28th uh, place, uh, his brother, Mike, and his father, Eddie Bone, a one heck of a racer from the New Jersey area himself, towed the car here earlier in the day, of course, with uh, Danny up in Watkins Glen racing in that truck series race. And then Mike... Well, he thought, maybe I'll have to practice it. Well, that turned into, oh, Danny's not going to get here yet. I'm going to have to qualify There's this darn thing. a little more thing. responsibility than I planned on today. Yes, and you talk about responsibility. We talk about the fact that this is a full field here tonight. They sent cars home here. We have such a good car count. So, Mike, he had to get up on the wheel and get that car in the show. So, Danny Bone, 
uh, waiting word on if he's here. He said he'd be here at 8.05. Uh, granted, he didn't get pulled over <laughs> from Statesville because he was going to take that Victory Air flight from Statesville with the first flight out of Watkins Glen with the teams and try to make the double. Watkins Glen and Bowman Gray Stadium. That's, that's quite the double. He's running his qualifying time from Statesville here to uh, Oh, probably. Yeah. Probably. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, police officers, if you're watching this streaming in your squad cars, please let Mr. Danny Bone by. Show him a little grace, okay? Take it easy on him. Well, there's going to be no grace as we go back to green flag racing here. Lap number nine. Taylor Robbins in the lead. That number 59 now closing in on the back bumper. Austin Harris with a good start there. Harris just hoping for enough green flag runs here to make a move on her. Oh, I don't know if you can see early back in that field right there, halfway through it. Brian Wall, man, let's get physical like the old 80s song. The fenders are hanging off that thing. Second time he's made some significant contact this time. He moves to double zero of Kale Martin out of the way. Kale Martin now stuck on the top group. Here comes Billy Gregg by him. Just under halfway to go now in this race. You said it. They're moving each other at this point. It's time to go. It is go time. Billy Gregg in the 98 wants to move up there. There you see Kale moving back through the field. Not a good way to uh, spend your street stock race on the outside here at Bowman Gray as he desperately tries to get back down to the bottom. Oh, up ahead right now, the 98 going for third place. Here comes Billy Gregg right behind your leaders. Billy Gregg going for third place around Brian Wall. He gets it. That's your point leader. Here comes the number one, Christian Joyce. Oh, we've got a spinner here in turn number two. Caution flag is out once again. Try to get a look at whose car that is. We just see the back of it. And you can't tell by the side of it. Do you know why? Because the side of that car is pretty darn ripped up. As he pulls out, oh, the cone. He, he That cone survived. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> call the cone's relatives. <laughs> It made it. What a resilient cone that was. Very resilient cone. You think it was the cone that did that damage there? I think so. I mean, these cones <laughs> here at Bowman Gray are strong. Maybe when it comes by here, we can tell you who that car was. Oh. It looks like the 13 there of Kevin yeah, Gilbert, is. if I can see it right. It is. The American flag 13. Looks really good on the right side. But I'll tell you what, the 22 right now is stalled. On the backstretch, that was your fourth place competitor, Brian Wall, the guy that was getting into everybody, but really moving up through the field. This could be a, a heartbreak moment for the number 22 team as they're looking inside the car now and talking to the driver. Billy Gregg has moved up. Oh, you see that crowd. What a healthy looking crowd here at Bowman Gray Stadium. Not filled to capacity, but this is a place that 16,900 people fit in here. So when they have an off night, I mean, come on, what's an off night, 13,000? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Most racetracks across the country would kill for a, tr uh, a night like that. And this place has it all. Beautiful facility, clean bathrooms, uh, beautiful concession stands. Uh, even roasted corn up in the top of turn number one and two that I was trying to get Jesse to, to see if we could get some of that. A few more caution flags and I might be running over there. Now, uh, you think we could actually get away with doing a broadcast and eating roasted corn, though? You want to find out? I don't know if our producer will like that one very much. I don't think so. We'd have to have Stricker here uh, take <laughs> over for us. Uh, Jesse was downing some chicken fingers earlier. Oh, which has this, me out. Thanks. Yes, which had this, uh, this big guy here <laughs> thinking about the concessions here yeah you got your cotton candy your funnel cake this is a great facility uh they're building new bathrooms here on the uh western side of the facility so this place is going to be tip-top shape probably next year all the renovations should be done here at bowman gray stadium and uh great vantage points everywhere you sit what i love about this place too obviously the it's a phenomenal place to come watch racing, but you said it yourself. It's a great place for families to come spend a Saturday night. You know, you're going to see plenty of action. You might learn a few new words if you're a young child, a few new hand signals there. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's a fun place to come um, watch some racing and, and really just have the perfect short track feel. Well, I call it bird season. 
Do you oh. know what bird season is? I, I could guess. I could That's gather. that little time between April and August where Bowman Gray races. Because when you watch the fans, there's a lot of birds <laughs> being, you know, thrown about. And I'm not talking pigeons or parakeets. We're talking in the one finger salute. Yes. But uh, uh, speaking of that, you know, all seriousness, this is a incredible family atmosphere. They have a beer garden, okay? The beer section is in turn four. The rest of the facility, alcohol free. So you could bring your kids here. There's not going to be any, you know, drunk, unruly people in the grandstands. I bring my children here, uh, you know, the weeks that we weren't doing this after, uh, I think it was the next week after we did track pass at the beginning of this season. I brought Hudson and Annabelle here and uh, we sat with the Savali kids and, uh, you know, a lot of families in the grandstands here. You need to take your dad here. I would love that. He just got it. He keeps himself busy. Where is he this weekend? He's in Nashville this weekend, actually, for the inaugural uh, IndyCar road course out there. He's doing some hospitality stuff out in Nashville. If I weren't here, I was going to maybe try to re weasel my way over there, but oh, I'm fortunate enough town. to be here at Bowman Gray tonight. <laughs> All right. Lights are out on the modern Chevrolet pace car. And Taylor Robbins about to kick this off. 14 laps on the scoreboard right now. As you see some of the fans leaning over right there, cheering on Taylor Robbins. I didn't see any birds there, so that's a great thing. Oh, that little girl right there wanting Taylor Robbins to win this race. And she's got a good shot of it with six laps to go. The green flag is back out at the Madhouse. I would say look out for that third place car. Billy Gregg is on the prowl. The former the defending champion of this division is in the catbird seat in a way. He's got two hungry young racers in front of him. What are they going to do with a 59? Put the bumper to Taylor Robbins to win this race. Five laps to go to decide this contest. Oh, there you go. Oh, boy. The 59 gets into the rear of Taylor Robbins. This is going to be interesting. Three-car fight at the front of this street stock field. Coming to three laps to go. Now the 59. His hood is flapping up on that 59 after the contact with the rear of Robin's machine. This is allowing Billy Gregg to try to sneak in. He's going to try to physically get his way by that number 59. And he's going to have to get physical. Hopefully that hood no doesn't blow up. Greg, the current points leader, looking to extend his lead tonight. But uh, Taylor Robbins is sitting at fifth. Here comes Taylor Robbins right now. White flag is out. One more corner to navigate for this young race car driver. Black, white, and green. Gets the black and white flag. That's right. Checkers are out for Taylor Robbins as he celebrates into turn number one. A very popular win here at Bowman Gray as the backstretch salutes the young female racer. Her first win of the season here. Yes, yes. Big first win of the season for Taylor Robbins. Her father actually qualifying a modified tonight for Tim Brown, their secondary automobile, as she pulls up to your chief starter, Randy Smith, in the white pants right there, giving her the checkered flag, and she'll go around and parade around this quarter mile oval as the fans you see him hanging over right now what a salute for taylor robbins this is what it means to win here jesse when you win here you don't get just cheered by 200 people and somebody's mom and maybe your your aunt you get cheered by 13,000 screaming race fans when you win here no matter what division you climb out feeling like a hero. And we'll see that for Taylor Robbins, her crew, including her husband in the shorts, running behind her. And let's go down to Randy Pettit. We'll give you some natural sound of the announcer. Filet 
through a shopping center sweet taste of victory with some milkshakes to share with her crew. She is excited, folks. Y'all, let her hear it. She is getting out of that car. Taylor Robbins of Winston-Salem wins for the first time here in 2021 at historic Bowman Gray Stadium. Taylor, what a night to win. We got all of America listening to you tonight on NASCAR Track Pass. What a great night to win here at the Madhouse. I know you've been over here on Saturday mornings practicing, getting some extra laps in, trying to find some speed in this car, and all that hard work paid off. Congratulations. Win number five of your street stock career. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you had uh, another young driver there behind you looks like he kind of jacked you up there on that last restart a little bit but you were able to pull away and get it done congratulations thank you thank you thank you austin for running me clean uh, i would like to thank sorry your auto solutions tommy at twin city towing uh john and kim at second and green tavern those guys are the aw awesomest that's not a word okay as you well know there's a lot of ladies here, both young and old, that root for you, and they're happy. Y'all let her hear it, folks. Tanya Taylor Robbins wins here at the Madhouse tonight. Taylor Robbins, her first win of the year, her fourth career, excuse me, fifth career win. And uh, tonight she does it. Another female entering the arena right now, Amber Lynn. Is this going to be the night for the girls here at Bowman Gray Stadium? It could be. Like you said, Amberlynn had a win last week here. So, hey, girl, to girl again. power. I like it. But uh, before we get going with this street uh, sportsman made event, the first of the twins for them tonight, we'll be back at Bowman Gray Stadium shortly. At Jerry Hunt Super Center, we make your car buying experience an easy one. With below market, no hassle prices, and a free lifetime powertrain warranty, why shop anywhere else? JerryHuntSuperCenter.com. We buy more, we sell more, you save more. All right, we're back here at Bowman Gray, and uh, the sportsman cars are lined up around this arena. I'm Matthew Dillner, alongside me, Jesse Punch here in the booth, in the press box here in beautiful Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and uh, ready to go for the first of your twin features for the sportsman division. The sportsman division, a uh, division that was coined by the late Alvin Hawkins who ran this place when it was first opened. He and Bill France promoted this racetrack. So the Hawkins family still working here today uh, in the sportsman division. That name, that term is something that they birthed. And right here at Bowman Gray, the sportsman division is alive and well. We're lucky enough to see stu two sportsman events tonight. This being the first of the two. Both 20 laps. All right, let's do your starting lineup here for this sportsman, first sportsman event, and uh, we'll take you from the back to the front. All right, starting in the 16th position, the 54 of Braden Mills from Wahlberg, North Carolina. Beside him, the 38th of Mitch Gales, also a North Carolina native, coming out of Thomasville. And in the 14th spot, the number 92, that's Kyle Southern from Rural Hall, North Carolina. In 13th spot, to his inside, the number five. He's got some wins to his credit and a street stock championship to his credit. The number five from Lexington, it's Spencer Martin. And in that white 31 car, that's Chase Robertson, hometown boy here from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And Wesley Thompson in the 22, a Moxville native, Moxville, North Carolina. And starting 10th tonight, Michael Adams leading the charge in the most popular driver award here so far this year in the number 19 from Yakinville. And alongside last week's winner, the number two, Amber Lynn from Walkertown. And starting in the eighth position from King, North Carolina, that's Justin Taylor in the 12 car. 
In the 08, Jacob Creed, another hometown boy from here in Winston-Salem, starting seventh. In sixth position, you see in this kid, well, he's won here, I believe, in a Bandolero car. And, uh, you know, he's been racing in some Xfinity Series stuff. Ronnie Bassett, Jr., from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, will be driving the uh, backup car to um, uh, the, the backup car here tonight for the number 19 of Michael Adams. And he'll line up sixth. On the inside of his car, the number 55, Zach Orr from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Starting in fourth in the sixth car, that's Kirk Sheets of Lexington. And in the 68, Robbie Brewer, another hometown, Winston-Salem, North Carolina native. And now as the lights are out on the pace car, we'll bring you your front row. The 03 on the outside, Sterling Plemons. And on the inside, the master of the sportsman division currently, Tiger, Tommy Neal in the red number 21. The pace car dips in. We're about to throw the green flag. They fire off a of turn number four. Tommy Neal with a big jump. Yellow flag is out. I don't think they like that start very much. Oh, some trouble in the back right there. The number 12 car of Justin Taylor gets into the back of somebody. He's got some significant damage on that car. Donkey strong. And uh, he is, along with that number 22 car, a few cars getting together there as the yellow flag came out. We're going to reset the pins here so to say, and go green flag racing. The front of the field looks like they're ready to go, but I don't think the mid-pack is lined up and ready to go. It might be one more trip around before we go green flag racing. Let's give you a little look at the point standings in here. Uh, the number 21 that's on the point right now, the Tommy Neal, he is leading the points over Zach Orr. Zach Orr will be in the third row as we go back to green here in a 55 car third place not that far behind would be the number two of Amber Lynn. Mind you, that's just a 12 point difference between Tommy Neal and Zach Gore. And as you said, Amber Lynn, just less than 10 points behind Zach. So those top three spots there are still up for grabs with just three races left in the season. Oh, this championship is not over yet, including the last race here in two weeks. Double points in all divisions to end the season. There's nothing more mad than that, and it just goes by the definition of madhouse. Nothing short of interesting here at Bowman Gray Stadium. <laughs> oh, boy. You just never know what you're going to see when you come here, whether it's in the stands, on the racetrack. This is uh, the greatest show around a football field. It's, it's kind of like part circus, part intense racing as we see some peace signs and some double birds being thrown as this field comes around and the lights are now out we're going to go green flag racing here to start this race again robbie brewer in third position is going to try to get a jump and stick to the back bumper of the 21 here and try to hang sterling plebbins out to dry on the outside Get ready. Trail breaking the cars through three and four. About to fire. A nice even start this time. And the green flag for the sportsman division. Just as we said, Robbie Brewer to the inside. He fills that hole getting past Sterling Plemons. He's got the number two spot. Zach Orr on his bumper trying to fill that hole too. He's in this championship bout right now. He needs that position. Move Zach Orr to third, but no, Sterling Plemons fighting hard on the outside. What a run by him. That takes some moxie. Now he gets into the number 55 as he files down to the inside to get into position number four. There's been some bumping and banging in this division a lot this year. Uh, we were talking to a few competitors that were talking about our uh, defending series champion. Justin Taylor, who we saw get into somebody. And now, Justin Taylor goes around. He looked like he had a tire going down. And Michael Adams in the 19 made slight contact to the back of that car to turn him all the way around. Donkey Strong not having the season that he had last year filled with consistency. This year, it's been filled with heartache and a lot of bent-up sheet metal. 
bent up sheet metal is right. Look at the front hood of that 12 as they bring it into the pits. All bowed up right there. And uh, the, your defending champion is now behind the field house in the pit area to see if he can make repairs and get that car back out here. Not a good year for uh, old, we, we call him Donkey Strong. He's got Donkey Strong t-shirts. I don't know what the Donkey Strong thing's about. I don't pretend to know. <laughs> I think the word donkey is funny, personally. So let's just go with it. He's donkeys a character. are strong, yeah? Yeah, yeah donkeys strong are pig, strong. I guess, yeah. Mules are stronger, though, right? Got it. Sure. Is there a difference? Yeah, I think a mule is more like a donkey and a horse were together. Got it. And so it's a bigger donkey, right? Sure. Somebody with horses is going to correct me, and I'm going to feel pretty silly. You can tweet at him at Matthew. At, at Matthew Dillner. <laughs> like, share with me your horse knowledge. Oh, speaking of donkeys, Justin Taylor's number 12 is back on the track minus a hood. Hey, and before we get going here, speaking of Twitter, yeah, we always love to do shout outs on Twitter while we're here on Track Pass. So if you have an opportunity or you're watching from wherever you may be, give us a shout out on Twitter. Maybe we'll give you a shout out on the air. Ooh, I would like like those tweet your seats. I always love seeing if people have man caves or or like she sheds or or just a cool living room or some sort of setup where they're at a short track somewhere else and they're maybe streaming it on their mobile device uh, and watching us. So uh, go for it. Tweet us here at at track pass. I always love it, too, because we have viewers from all over the country. So tell us where you're watching from. We'd love to know. We're about to go green flag racing. It's at underscore track pass. Make sure you tweet us. Green flag is back out here. Lap number four in the books is Tiger Tommy Neal, the master. 51 wins. He's up front. Robbie Brewer in second place. Zach Orr We're playing a little accordion back there between second, third, and fourth positions. Little bumper tag, and you'll see a lot of that tonight. These guys want to keep their cars in good shape though because they have another feature coming up later today is the weather playing into the mental uh mentality of these drivers being a little bit more aggressive knowing hey will this be our only feature of the night i have to believe it is oh boy right here zach Orr throws it to the bottom trying to get around robbie brewer contact between the two side by side down the front stretch oh, a shower of sparks and a bunch of twisted sheet metal is what we're seeing tonight. Some aggressive driving. Justin Taylor pulls off the track in the number 12. But right now, your leader is the number 21. But Zach Orr, welcome to second spot. Tough run for the 68 there. Got pushed to the outside and is quickly losing position as we see the caution flag come out. That is true. Not a good uh, turn of events for Robbie in that number 68. And your leader, the number 21 car. We spoke to the number 21 car of Tommy Neal uh, before uh, things got kicked off here on Track Pass Live. Um, and, and Tommy Neal had a, a bit of an interesting day, didn't he? He did. We talked to him before the race. He said they had some issues in practice before they even made it out there to qualifying. I believe he said a bolt fell off yeah, of his shifter. Of the shifter knob. Yes. Yeah. He said we checked everything else in the car and everything was good, but no one ever thought to check a bolt on the shifter. And, of course, that's the thing that gave him trouble. Yeah, he was joking with us, uh, Jesse, and saying that it's funny. They, they put uh, reworked the transmission, the axles and stuff, but it was a $5 part that could have taken him out tonight. Green flag is back out, and it looks like they have that shifter fixed and running well as the number 21 gets off to a nice launch, and especially down the backstretch, back putting that power down to the pavement. And with that, we're officially halfway through this race. And right now, Zach Orr in the second spot, Sterling Clemens in third, and now move Michael Adams up to the fourth spot. Amber Lynn in fifth position. You see her car, the number two, right there. Just out of your screen. Amber Lynn. Michael Adams right now. You see those three cars, second, third, and fourth. The 55 of Zach Orr. The 03 right there of Sterling Clemens. And the 19 of favorite, fan favorite, Michael Adams. Always parks his hauler right behind the field house. A very friendly and likable competitor. Longtime competitor here at Bowman Gray Stadium. 
Right now, I think uh, I think old Tommy Neal is trimming his toenails with the fan on that thing because he's got the foot to the floor in that 21 and putting the power down to the pavement. And he's checked out. Quickly pulling lead. away from the field there. The battle is definitely for second. What I like about this, too, is Amber Lynn has boogied up. Man, she's gotten up on the wheel. She's closed in to the back of the number 19 car with five laps to go. This is a four-car battle here behind the leader. Amber Lynn's going to make it interesting. She's not afraid to put the bumper to somebody. Aggressive into turn three. Adams shuts the door. Amber Lynn took the win last week in the first twin race. Oh, you saw the 19 protect the low groove there. The bottom is king here at Bowman Gray, and that's a veteran move right there. Three laps to go. Tommy Neal in the front of this field, but a four-car battle for the rest of the field. Here comes Amber Lynn, marching her way to the bottom. Underneath Adams, he gives her the room. Side by side off a of turn number four, give the spot number four to Amber Lynn. What a pass. Coming to the white flag from Randy Smith for Tommy Neal. A good point tonight for Zach Orr in second place. But the 21 car once again showing his stuff. And boy, oh boy, is he the man to beat here at Bowman Gray so far this year. Get the checkered flag, head out the window. It's Tiger Tommy Neal. Win number three of the season for the points leader, leader Tiger. Ti that is not easy to say, Tiger Tommy Neal. No, it, it really isn't. <laughs> Last year, he won four times. So you're saying, what, what, when was it? His fourth this year? Number three. Number three this yep. year. So, hey, he's still got a shot at tying last year's mark. And he could do so tonight. Still another run later tonight. This would be, I believe, his 51st. I kind of like that number, 51. It's my family number. 51st win for Tiger Tommy Neal as he takes the checkered flag. And you'll see him run right by the camera here in turn number one and two. To the delight of the fans here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, Tommy Neal parades around with the checkered flag in hand. Oh, oh a donut a from the... Oh, you could teach an old dog new tricks. Come on now, I love it. Tommy Neal showing that fire. He may be a veteran, but he is pumped to win the first of the twin features tonight as he takes the backwards victory lap now around turn number one up in the marbles. And he's going to bring it to the Carolina Wood Floors Victory Lane and to the start finish line for Victory Lane. This is going to be a fun little one right here. Maybe an abbreviated celebration or maybe not. Here comes the fans, the crew, the family all out onto the front stretch to greet the 51 time winner at Bowman Gray Stadium. Folks, let's go down to our very fun and eclectic a PA announcer, Randy Pettit, in the beautiful sparkly outfit, and he's going to bring you the natural sound and the winner's interview down on the front stretch, Tommy Neal. Turns out for the Tiger, Tommy Neal. What did he get? 12 for the Tiger. So whoever finished 12th in that first race is going to start on the pole for race number two here at the Madhouse. The Tiger Tommy Neal. Victory number 51 of your Bowman Gray Stadium career here in sportsman competition. And what better way to keep that point lead than to keep that car out front you drew the pole, and there was no looking back. Congratulations. It was a great run. This car was phenomenal. It was it was great handling-wise. Uh, we had a little bit of mishap in practice. A shifter went out, and my, my family took care of it. Kevin, <laughs> Riley, he drew the draw. Uh, all the great sponsors. Uh, they couldn't make it out here without DWR and all the work they do. Uh, Brad's Golf Carts, Hayes Jewelers, CNC Lock and Key, Velocita, Paul Jacks, Walk Down Mall Mule. 
Big Daddy's Trailer Sales. You took the note. We took you took the trailer. Uh, Philip Gossett Landscape and Nursery, Affordable Septic. And we all couldn't be here without Jesus Christ. Tommy, congratulations. We'll let you go over there in the Carolina Wood Forest Winter Circle and celebrate victory number 51 here at the Madhouse for the Tiger, Tommy Neal. Plenty of celebrations down there for Tiger Tommy Neal. As you said, third win of the season. He's no stranger to uh, victory lane here at Bowman Gray. No, he isn't, as him and his family are about to hop up on the most unique winner's circle in America. I don't even know what to call this thing. You see a little peek of it on your screen. Maybe we could get one of the cameras to show this. But as you see, the uh, Winston-Salem's finest looking upon Victory Lane right now. But the Carolina Wood Floors Victory Lane is that little truck you see there. So after they do their interview, the team and driver hop on this little platform truck. And yeah, there you see it right there. That is, uh, I've never seen a track in America that has a victory lane as unique as this one. It's real fun watching it drive in and out after each race. That's my favorite part. Watching it come down and turn around, <laughs> I think is quite comical. Well, Tommy Neal finishing his celebration. They're going to do one more group picture, but... On the track right now oh is boy. the featured card for the night. And oh boy, do we have a race for you tonight. The Mighty Modifieds are on the track tonight at Bowman Gray Stadium. And they are getting ready for a 100-lap race. Oh, and this is going to be a good one. We've had the fans challenge, okay? Uh, John Holloman took the pole. And uh, second was Lee Jeffries, I believe. Third was Tim Brown, uh, the 22 of... Um, of, of um, uh, Jonathan Brown. Jonathan Brown was the only one to take the fans challenge. Folks, let me explain this real quick. Okay, the fans challenge, $3,000. If you're in the top four and you decide to start in the rear, you're taking the fans challenge. So now Jonathan Brown was the only one to do it. So he'll start in the rear of this big field tonight, of this 27 car field. And if he makes it up to the top four, he gets an additional $3,000. That's a gutsy move. That is an incredibly gutsy move. And it's like you said, he was the only one to take it tonight. We have talked to a lot of different drivers in the pits before the race, and a lot of them said, at this point in the season, I'm not willing to take it. I'm willing to take the position. <laughs> but he took the risk, and let's see if it pays off for him. All right, let's get you set for this 100 lapper tonight and uh, give you the starting lineup from back to front here of the mod squad here for their 100 lapper at Bowman Gray Stadium. Starting scratch on the field. And you see his car right there, red, white, and blue. Number 22, we're going to keep an eye on him tonight. From Winston-Salem, North Carolina, John Boy, the number 22, Jonathan Brown. In the 26th spot, the number 36, the backup car for Burt and Jason Myers. The number 36 of Jason Southern to his inside. His daughter just won the street stock race, the number 88. It's Brad Robbins. Starting in the 24th position in that 05 car, Bussy Beavers. And next to him in the 23rd, it's the beautiful white and orange number seven of Dylan Ward, hometown boy here from Winston-Salem. Oh, uh, we were saying how much we love that race car today when we looked at it in the pit area. Starting 22nd in the 07 Hayes Jewelers machine, the blue car. Oh, that's a beautiful machine. It brings back memories. From Roanoke, Virginia, it's Dennis Holdren. Starting 21st. From Kernersville, North Carolina, the orange and blue number 44, it's Daniel Beeson. In the 20th position in that six car is Chris Williams, a Virginia native coming out of Martinsville. And next to Williams starting in the 19th position, Daniel Yates driving that number 18. He's from Lexington, North Carolina. Starting in 18th, a beautifully prepared number three car from Monroe, North Carolina, it's Danny Probst. And on the inside... Oh, this guy can be the show here sometimes. The number 79 from Davidson, North Carolina. Well, he's really Connecticut boy. They call him the one-man Taliban. Yeah, he'll put on a show tonight, James Savali, starting 17th. On the outside, starting in 16th, hailing from Mount Airy, North Carolina, there's Chris Fleming in the 16. And next to Fleming, Winston-Salem native John Holman, the fourth in the 69. 
Oh, Holloman's been putting on a show this year. Starting 14th, Darren Redman in a beautifully prepared car. Number eight from Walnut Cove, North Carolina. And starting in the 13th spot. The very famous car here, the red number 53, Melvin Puddin Swisher owned machine, Joseph Bobo Brown. In the 12th position in the 68 car, it's Junior Miller, an all time great here at Bowman Gray Stadium. And beside Junior in the 12 car, starting in the 11th position, Dean Ward. And starting 10th tonight, the 04. Well, it says 104 on the side of the car, the 104.1. Black Modify, that's Brandon Ward from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And oh boy, it's good to see the number 99 starting in ninth. A very likable veteran of the modified ranks, William Smith. But we like to call him Crab Smith. Of course, yes. And you know him if you've watched racing here at Bowman Gray. Lee Jeffries in the 75. He's starting here in the eighth position. And of course, Tim Brown in the 83 from Tobaccoville, North Carolina, is starting in seventh. And starting sixth tonight, a former NASCAR Cup Series champion in the cookout car. It's Bobby Labonte starting sixth. Alongside on the inside, a veteran of the Bowman Gray Stadium modified ranks from Pathtown, North Carolina, the number five of Randy Buntner. Burt Meyer second in the points right now. You know him in that one car. He's starting fourth. And beside Burt, Danny Bone in the 65, starting third. And now the front row starters for this 100-lap contest tonight. On the outside, the number 15. You'll see him come into frame here right now on track pass. It's the Shady Grady ride from Clemens, North Carolina, the very likable Brian Lofton. And on the pole tonight after the redraw, Walnut Cove, North Carolina, it's fan favorite Jason Myers, the younger brother of the Myers Brothers family, starts on the pole. You know, Matthew, while we have a minute here, I mentioned it before we opened up the uh, floodgates here on Twitter. We got a lot of people shouting us out. But in the brief time that we have now, I want to give a shout out to Kip Childress. He said oh, yeah. he's watching from Watkins Glen. He's got the Bowman Gray action dialed up on NBC Sports Gold Track Pass. So thanks, Kip. Thanks for tuning in. That's pretty cool. Kip, hey, what's up, buddy? Of course, the Fox 8 WGHP 100 tonight at Bowman Gray Stadium live on Track Pass. You hear the thunder right now, and it's a different kind of thunder than we're starting to uh, maybe hear from the sky. But it's the thunder, the unmistakable thunder of a modified. This is a race car that is unlike any other. You look at them, you hear them, you feel them. This is the origins of NASCAR. NASCAR started with the NASCAR Modified Division. Before Strictly Stocks came to be, before Grand Nationals came to be, there were Modifieds, open wheels, big bumpers, Nerf bars, the headers, the air cleaner sticking up out of the hood. It's an unmistakable beast of a machine, and you're going to see these jet fighters in a gymnasium. What I mean is overpowered race cars on a tiny little track this is a show matthew i have to tell you the very first time i ever got to experience the modifieds in person was here at bowman gray and i was up on the roof of the press box that we're in right now and i will never forget that i think i would just had my mouth open for the first five to ten laps of the race <laughs> because i truly could not comprehend what was going on in front of me See, I, I've been blessed to grow up in modified racing, cutting my teeth at places like Stafford going there on every Friday night, uh, Islip Speedway, Riverhead Raceway, Wall Stadium, Agawa, Massachusetts, Riverside Park, Thompson Speedway in Connecticut. I grew up a modified person, and the first time I came here in 2001, I just could not believe that I found a place that reminded me of home. The sounds, the smells, the atmosphere, this is like a mix between what I grew up with, with Islip Speedway, and maybe the atmosphere I always heard of, of a place like the Danbury, the Danbury Race Arena up in Connecticut that the LaJoys ran at so famously. Uh, this is the show here tonight, and the Modifieds rule 
in Winston-Salem. If you look at the southeast, you're mainly here late models, right? Sure. Late model stocks in some areas. But when it comes to this little patch of pavement around a football field, the modifieds will always be king. Well, and you want to talk about the passion in this place, the passion in this series. The will to win from the guys behind the wheel of these modifieds is unmatched. And as we said, with just a few races to go before we crown a champion, things are really starting to heat up in this series. You know, we talked about Danny Bone earlier, okay? And, you know, what's really interesting, and I want to talk about this real briefly as the lights go out in the pace car and we get ready for green. We've got a NASCAR Cup Series champion in the field in Bobby Labonte, but we also have two incredible greats of this place with Tim Brown and Burt Myers, okay? You know, two 10-time track champions here. But then if you look back further in the field, tonight a special treat in a renumbered 68. It looks like John Holloman's car, but Junior Miller, a 74-time winner. Doesn't come back here too often now, but the great Junior Miller is competing tonight. The Modifieds getting ready to rumble. These are the men that live by the grace of God and 600 horsepower. The green flag is out and the Modifieds are racing at Bowman Gray. Oh boy, already some bumper tag and a, a false start called by Chief Starter Randy Smith and this team of race stewards up here in the box. Race director Robert Pettit did not like that start, calling them back to reset it and go green once again. Jason Myers on the front row to his right. The number 15, that Shady Grady ride, a very well-known Southern modified mount, Brian Lofton. And to see the veteran, the KG veteran, the number five, Randy Butner, right underneath him. I remember him and Burt Myers the first time I came here battling for the win in 2001. And Burt Myers with the famed arch bumper on the outside of turn, uh, the fourth position. He's only a few points behind Tim Brown. This is a very hotly contested championship with uh, uh, three events to go, Jesse. Six points to be exact. Just wow. a six point difference. Wow. Tim Brown on top of the points with 402. Yeah. Six points behind. Burt Myers, Lee Jeffries a little further back, but we have this 100 lapper with a full field of cars. So if you finish 26, that's going to hurt you big. And, you know, remember that last race is double points, too. So this championship is not just a two-car two race. The rivalry has simmered down a bit, too, between Burt Myers and Tim Brown. But, you know, there's always a fuse here at Bowman Gray Stadium. And you never know when that fuse is going to be lit. We were just reviewing some video before of the great incident that has gone into almost folklore here in 2014 between Tim Brown and Burt Myers. This is the first time you saw that. Can you even put into words and tell the fans at home what you saw? I said it looked like bullfighting to me, quite honestly. I think it was uh, gloves were off, but they were head to head, nose to nose. It looks like the burnout, honestly, right, right there in between one and two. Yeah, like they were literally sparring under yellow flag and, and wrecking each other's cars. At some point, it was almost hard to see what was going on through all the smoke that was being fired up there on the track. But I love how you say the rivalry simmered down because I have to believe that a even a simmered down version of this rivalry is still a pretty hot rivalry here. Well, tonight we have the extension of some rivalries, too, because Junior Miller, the driver we mentioned that's deeper in the field, uh, Junior Miller, of course, that 74 time winner and one of the all time greats here at Bowman Gray Stadium has a very noted rivalry in particular with not Burt Myers, but the entire Myers family, starting with their father, Gary, okay, on the Smart Tour races back in the day, all the different races in this region, and especially here at Bowman Gray Stadium where things get physical. And then that rivalry carried over to Jason Myers, who's on the pole in that number four car, and Burt Myers. But uh, the 68 car of Junior Miller, known for his 69 car, is, yeah, he's just been fishing and having fun lately. He's not driving full-time, but from time to time, he's going to come back and hop in a car here at Bowman Gray and 
they got together earlier this year, he and Jason Myers. So that rivalry still exists. One was questioning whether the rivalry would heat up between the other car in that 69 camp, John Hollum in the fourth, one of the bright young stars here, and Burt Myers, because they got together a few weeks ago. And uh, we asked Burt, you and I, when we were down there, if it was over. <laughs> and he kind of smiled just like you did right there, but he did say that he approached Holloman afterwards and said, hey, are we even? Because he hopped, chopped down on him and they shook hands and said they were even, but you never know at Bowman Gray Stadium. I think it was over that night. Doesn't mean the season's over by any means. Green flag is out and we are racing here in the modified division at Bowman Gray Stadium. Jason Myers hops out front to the point. A bad start for the number 15 of Brian Lofton. Bobby Labonte successfully gets down to the bottom. A great start for Randy Butner. Butner, Butner in the second spot. You see Bobby Labonte's car right there, right behind Lofton. Lofton side by side with Burt Myers. Down the back stretch. Ken Myers hold on on the outside. That's the tough way around this great quarter mile oval and he does it fourth position to Burt Myers we got some cars in the infield grass right now the yellow flag is out here on lap number three at Bowman Gray Stadium for a minor incident so we'll reset the pins we're gonna have double file restarts tonight folks and the choose cone that's going to make things super interesting and uh mark keeler and the guys in the truck and our great cameramen we're going to try to bring you what that looks like um when they bring the choose cone out i don't know if you can see right there as we pan by the flag stand you're going to see jeff bunton holding so majestically that cone on the bottom of the track right by the crossover Four laps in the books in this 100-lap feature event. John Holloman, uh, you see him passing your screen right there. He chose not to take the fans' choice tonight. He qualified on the pole. By redraw, he probably should have taken it because he got shuffled back mid-pack there. It wouldn't have been too bad, but he said his reason for not doing it was he didn't want to start too far in the back in such a deep field tonight. Beautiful crowd on hand here at Bowman Gray Stadium. Approximately 13,000 people around this football field. The lights are out. The choose cone is out. Tim Brown goes to the top. Everybody choosing behind him right now. Brown hops up from third position. Randy Butner, who's in second, chose the bottom. Playing it safe early on in this 100-lap affair. Green flag about to come out. Side by side, it's gonna be a drag race, but the jump goes to Jason Myers. Can the 83 make it to the bottom? Randy Butner tries to fill the hole. Butner to the bottom of the number 83 of Tim Brown. Side by side, coming down the front stretch. Butner looks to have the advantage. Now here comes Burt Myers to the bottom. Myers sticks to the nose of his number one underneath the fluorescent day glow orange number 83 give the third spot to Burt Myers settling into the third spot right now Burt Myers fourth would be Tim Brown fifth Bobby Labonte your outside pole sitter now settling into the sixth position Brian Lofton Further back in the field, you saw a shot there of John Holloman. Now you see the Shady Grady 15 and the number 75 of Lee Jeffries. Speed here at Bowman Gray Stadium. You think, hey, they can't be going too fast, but this is a quarter mile oval. But these things have crazy power. Give you a nice wide look at this arena as the Modifieds go single file for now. 100 laps, biding their time. 89 laps to go.
The camera watching them plant those cars into the corner in turn number one is a thing of beauty right here. But we're actually watching a cool battle right now develop in second place. Third place, excuse me, Burt Myers, but the 83 closed up to his bumper. Kind of looking like he was going to mount the challenge there for third spot. Here comes the 83 to the back bumper of Burt Myers. The Hayes Jewelers, Jerry Hunt Superstores, Orange Machine. You're used to seeing the blue 83 of Tim Brown, but that new paint scheme on the 83. The 10-time champion following the 10-time champion. This is the battle of the Goliaths of Bowman Gray Stadium for third and fourth position. Just shortly back from them in the fifth position. Bobby Labonte holding strong his first start here in 2021. Two years ago before the pandemic, he made one start here, his first ever start at Bowman Gray Stadium. He's been running that modified on the Smart Modified Tour and having some success. He almost won at Franklin County Speedway before a late race bumper by James Savali took him out of that lead. But Bobby Labonte enjoying modified racing so much. And uh, he has said that he's going to compete in the final three races here at Bowman Gray Stadium. That's right. He'll be here the next two weeks. So if you didn't get a chance to come out to Bowman Gray and watch him run tonight, you have two more opportunities to do so this season. Hey, that's a Hall of Fame driver. So if you're a NASCAR fan, I mean, why wouldn't you come out here and watch that? And he's not just an also-ran. Bobby Labonte gets up on the wheel. He's driving the heck out of that number 25 car. 80 laps to go as the Modifieds roll around this quarter-mile oval on track pass. Lee Jeffries now applying a little bit of pressure to the back bumper of the number 15 of Brian Lofton. You said it earlier, we have a full field of modifieds and you can feel it even up here in the booth. These ground pounders are rumbling down there on the track here at Bowman Gray. The unmistakable sound and feel of 600 horsepower, especially enclosed into this tight arena here. Single file they go, but you know, all it takes is one little tip tap, one little bump from the chrome horn of one of these modifieds and the battle is on. You know it will erupt at some point here. The fans are anticipating it. It probably will come a little bit later in this event, but right now, drivers biding their time in this 100-lap affair. Still 75 laps to go. You said it. Things are going to get interesting, but right now it's a game. It's a long game here in this 100-lapper. You know, we're not really seeing it on our screen right now, but the battle for the lead really isn't on. I mean, the number four car of Jason Myers is, is running some good lap times, but he's really saving the tires in that car. But Randy Butner in the number five has started to reel in your leader. Randy Butner in the number five, it's an older modified. And what I love about Randy Butner is he shows up to the track here with one of the older haulers here in the uh, field. If you look right there, you see the number 53 car of Bobo Brown. Right behind him, John Holloman. John Holloman winning last week in that black and pink number 69. One of the hot young stars here at Bowman Gray Stadium. 24 years old is John Holloman. And uh, he's uh, the first rookie since Glenn Wood back in 1953 to win three races in his rookie season. Can he break that mark? and get up front tonight to do it. He has been incredibly impressive this season. Almost as impressive as that math you did to tell us how old he was. As what? I said the math that you did. If only oh, they could have seen us up here a little earlier uh, I mean, trying to oh, figure out. We've got trouble here. James Savali goes around uh, the back bumper of the number 53. Savali reversing that number 79 hillbilly racing car and getting it back fired up. Contact between the number 53 of Bobo Brown and smoke now billowing 
from Bobo Brown's number 53 machine as it sits in turn number two. Uh, Redman also in the number eight car involved in that wreck. Darren Redman, 68 laps to go. This is your third yellow on the night. Redman is stopped there. You see that beautiful car stopped in turn number one and two. Let's take a look at this replay. Tell me what you see here. Well, the here goes Savali. Oh, interesting. interesting. <laughs> I thought, I, I stand corrected, I assumed that maybe there was a little bumper tag there. Savali went in, was very free on entry. Watch the 79, kind of cut down and get free on entry right before the contact. A little bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact, and that's all it took for them to go around. A little bit more of a racing incident to cause that one. Great replay by our booth down there, by our uh, truck. Mark Keeler and the guys and everybody and all of our great cameramen bringing us the shots tonight. As they try to get Redmond's car turned in the right direction and pushed back. Maybe get that thing refired or push it back to pit road. Redmond, they're merely a victim of circumstance in one of those situations. That's tough. But it looks like he's got the thing fired and is hopefully going to get back running here as we get going. Just 33 laps into this 100 lap modified main event tonight. Matthew, you said it earlier, things are gonna get incredibly interesting as the laps tick down, but right now it's it's merely the long game. It is the long game and you're absolutely right there, Jesse. Uh, this, is a, this is not a 35 lapper where you could burn that right rear off and go to the front. Even if you're in the back here, you have to take care of the rubber on that race car. Uh, these are big tires with a lot of grip, but you buzz them and you're gonna lose a lot of speed and, and definitely uh, affect the handling on your car. You know what, I'd love it if we could get a shot at some point of Danny Bone's red and white number 65 car. That 65 car is deep in the field because Danny Bone had to start towards the rear of the field because his brother, Mike Bone, had to qualify the car because Danny was running in the truck series event at Bowman Gray, at uh, Watkins Glen. Danny Bone, though, made it here at about eight o'clock, that number 65 car, red and white machine. Hopefully we can get our cameras looking here as we're probably getting pretty set for the cone here pretty soon. We'll let you know. Think about that. What a day for what Danny Bone. Not only the, the traveling from upstate New York down here to, to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, but you go from running on a 2.4-mile road course of Watkins Glen in a truck to taking on the modified 100-lapper here on a quarter-mile racetrack at Bowman Gray. There's a bit of There's a that there. number 65, Danny Bone. Okay, you said you didn't like math. I, I hate math. Okay, that. that chassis, as successful as it is here at Bowman Gray Stadium, wins here. He's a very talented driver, originally from New Jersey. That chassis we're looking at right there, what do you think? Like a 2017 Troyer or whatever? No, that's a 1991 chassis. You're joking. I'm not joking. That is a, let's do the math. I'll tell you this, that chassis is older than I am. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but I it is. I think that's 30 years, right, Stricker? Is that 30 years? 30 year old chassis. So, hey, folks, don't just say, you know, hey, that guy has the best of everything. He's a cat, he's a, he's a gander mountain outdoor world champion, you know, like a, like a truck series racer. This guy is racing here and winning in a car that was built in 1991. That is awesome. Let's recap the top five as we're about to go green here. 
the number four of Jason Myers, right alongside, taking the outside. It's the brotherly front row. Burt Myers, Randy Butner in the third position, and Tim Brown. Top five on the inside would be Bobby Labonte. Green flag is about to wave. Brotherly love off of turn number four. Oh, Burt with the great jump, but now side by side. The Myers brothers at Bowman Gray Stadium. Oh, the hard charge by Burt Myers on the outside, but to no avail. Little brother has the lead. Burt Myers files in behind the number four car. In third, Tim Brown, Randy Butner back to fourth. The fans are on their feet here at Bowman Gray watching the Myers brothers battle it out. And here comes the 104 car, Brandon Ward, trying to pick up a spot on the number 75 of Lee Jeffries. John Holloman sticks his nose underneath trying to get that spot. But Jeffries closes the door, washes up at the turn number one contact. Jeffries goes around in a cloud of smoke. I might need another look at that one to oh. understand exactly what happened there. But Things Holloman are might be uh, interesting. making a new arrival this week. <laughs> we just got a text message saying uh, he's racing in a chassis, Danny Bone, uh, one year younger than Days of Thunder. Did Harry Hogg build it for him? Good question. <laughs> it was built in a barn in North Carolina, Mooresville, to be exact. The barn is still standing. Don't, yeah, Mike Joy admitted it. He owned it. The great Mike Joy. The barn, the Days of Thunder barn, you could still drive by it and go pay homage if you're a fan of the movie. What's your favorite line from the movie? Let's watch this replay first. Oh, replay's coming up? Oh, let's do this. Oh, here we go. The number 75 white car right there is Lee Jeffries, John Holloman right behind him. Jeffries approaches the corner, goes in a little bit hot. Oh, that's a racing incident. What do you think? I agree with that. That does look more like a racing incident. The 75 definitely got in there a little bit hot and oh, yeah. gave the bottom to the 69 he did have the position they just got together right there he wasn't sure almost like the spotter didn't clear him yeah nothing holloman could have done about that one no i don't think so and that was tough for the 75 too because going in that hard that car you see it right there when he was on the brakes was definitely getting a little loose already hey you live and die sometimes by the bumper here at Bo McGray Stadium. Sometimes you're the bug, sometimes you're the windshield. I believe the next time around, we're going to have the cone. So let's try to get a shot of this cone here. Like, okay, we'll introduce you. These are the cone restarts, okay? We have a common traffic cone. And you put it on the front stretch, and instead of the little deal and cup where it's like a little triangle painted on the, in on the track, we actually use an old school cone here. Mr. Cohn is brought out by our lovely friend, Jeff Bunton. The leaders approach it and choose the inside or outside as they come to it. Jeff Bunton, a flag man and AML professional wrestler. At night here at Bowman Gray, he waves flags. During the week, he wears spandex. <laughs> Tonight, he's Mr. Cohn here at Bowman Gray, and the leaders have chosen Jason Myers, the leader, takes the inside. His brother up to the top side. Tim Brown has taken the inside. He will line up third with Randy Butner in the white number five in fourth, taking the high side. A little risque for Randy Butner. Line them up here, 45 laps in at Bowman Gray Stadium. These restarts are exciting, and this one is full of two brothers, the Myers boys, down at turn number one. Jason Myers gets the advantage. The bottom goes back to the number one. Single file. They go through the north turn. Single file throughout much of this event. And right now looking towards the back the first car double file is Jonathan Brown. Jonathan Brown started this race 
in the rear of the field. Dylan Ward, the number seven. Some troubles, you see him right there, scooping onto the bottom of the track, getting that car upset. Right now, you're looking at Burt Myers in the black and white number one, the Dayglow car, the 83. Caution is out. Jonathan Beeson, trouble for Beeson. The right front, the tire rod is definitely broke on that thing. No, maybe not. Maybe not. It looked a little towed out, though, Jonathan Beeson, after some contact with the wall of that number 44 machine. You know, if you start out front here, it's always an advantage. And right now, Jason Myers is taking care of that advantage. 50 laps in, and the number four car is the leader on the scoreboard. That beautiful scoreboard sitting on top of the field house here at Bowman Gray Stadium. Uh, the old field house used to be this white little building. It almost looked like a house that your grandmother would live in. And now the Winston-Salem State University shares this facility with the uh, NASCAR racing here. And they built a beautiful facility and locker room right there for the football fields, for the coaching rooms and whatnot. You can see it right there. A gorgeous structure that has become a beloved, iconic part of this beautiful and picturesque racetrack. Well, and it's like we said earlier, here at Bowman Gray, it is a stadium. There isn't a bad seat in the house by any means. Anywhere you are fortunate enough to be in this place, you're going to experience the action. But there's a slew of fans up there on that on that higher lifted railing coming off the field house. I have to believe that's got to be a fun spot to sit and watch the races. Yeah, I've watched a practice up there. Uh, I know there's some VIPs up there. There's also some team people that have paid to be up there. So uh, a, 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 not the place that fans can go sit, but uh, definitely an entertaining place to watch a race here at Bowman Gray. You'll see it here as we creep the camera here with the leaders going into turn three and four. You see the trailers there. And there's that beautiful field house. VIPs, huh? VIPs. That'd be pretty I mean, important maybe to get up Jesse there. Punch could pull some strings and, and <laughs> go sit up there sometime. I don't know about that. I, I'm just going to follow your lead. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Hey, it was nice walking around this pit area with you. The cone is out right now earlier today, getting to know some of these drivers. This modified community and this racing community here throughout all the divisions are full of some passionate, fiery racers, but they're also good human beings. The Chris Flemings, uh, the Spencer Martins, uh, you know, Amber Lynn, who we talked about before. So many crew members that have been working here for so many years on teams like that 53 car of Melvin Puddin Swisher. Uh, just good people. Same for the officials. Everyone's yes. so welcoming here. I love any opportunity to come back and see my friends at Bowman Gray. This is an unusual start. I don't know what's going on here, but the yellow flag is going to fly. Burt Myers looked like he wasn't ready to go. Was there some gamesmanship between he and his little brother? Interesting. That is interesting. It's going to make for a tough family dinner. I think this we're going week. back to green right away. I like this. Great job by the race director here to get those cars bunched up. Green flag again, oh. and Burt Myers just does not go. I wonder if something is going on with maybe his transmission, or I don't know what's going on here. He looks like he launched his very good there. Maybe some confusion? I don't know. Maybe he thinks little brother's getting too much of a launch and firing early. Let's see here. Third time's a charm, we hope, here on track pass. Jason Myers to the inside, Burt Myers to the outside. They fire off a turn number four, side by side, the four, the one. Oh, you see the four car rolling good in the center of that corner, getting the advantage slightly down the back stretch into the north turn. Big wreck in turn three. Giant wreck has blocked the entire racetrack here. Wow. Oh, Daniel Yates, the 75 of Lee Jeffries. Beeson going to the pit area. About seven, eight cars involved. Bobo Brown also involved. Trying to see if that's Chris Fleming. I believe that was Chris Fleming up there. Or is that Crab Smith? That is Crab Smith. No, that is Fleming. Fleming with a right front flat. 
on the number 16 showstopper car and some damage to the rear of his car Yates's car stuck up there Dylan Ward's number seven you see him just on the screen those wheels are facing the wrong way he's going to be going into the pit area they made contact with the tire there at the pit entrance big contact with that tire look at that tire Jesse it's moved over wow but when you have the power of almost 10 modifies uh, running into it, I have to believe that would do a little bit of damage. Yes, it would. That was, that was like a traffic jam on the Long Island Expressway there. <laughs> you know, the cross Bronx or maybe, you know, the whole track was blocked. Of course, uh, you know, now the yellow flag is out. Uh, it, I, I thought the red flag was going to come out. But, you know, Randy Smith is, is being a little tight with his flags down there. He, he's like, the red flag is resting here. We don't want to disturb it. He knows what he's doing down there. Oh, he does. Uh, you know, Randy Smith, some of the best of the business work here. From this hardworking track crew to the officials up here in the booth to our left, uh, to the Penelis family, uh, Gray Garrison, the Hawkins family uh, that have run this racetrack for so long. This is the first racetrack, uh, the first NASCAR weekly series racetrack. Big Bill France, the first weekly track he ever promoted, was right here. It's amazing the history that this place holds from everywhere from from the people that run this place that score these races to the people on the track it's you said it multiple times tonight family is such a key word here at Bowman Gray and you feel it when you have an opportunity to come experience this place man you just saw those cars did you see that cars coming into pit road on that great camera right there in turn number three damage right there on Daniel Yates's machine but uh the showstopper car number 16 pulling in with extensive damage the right front of lee jeffrey's car is towed out extremely that's a tough tough ride for the 18 having to cut across the infield grass there the football field if you will making his way on the wrecker into the pits hey a little update for you because this fans challenge thing you know, if you're watching here and you're not a regular at Bowman Gray Stadium, you may not understand it. If you qualify in the top four, you have an opportunity pre-race to say, hey, I'm going to start in the rear and go for the fans challenge, which is just a bonus. But it's a severe disadvantage to start in the back of a 27 car field. And that car right there, John Boy, who won the race at the beginning of the season that we telecast here on track pass, the season opener, the Hayes Jewelers 200, he had the moxie to choose the fans challenge and right now he's up to 10th jesse that moxie paid off and it could literally pay off big time if he can pull off a win here tonight what'd you say three thousand no, dollars six thousand i was just told thousand dollars nobody won it the last 100 lapper it's only for the 100 lappers nobody won it so now it's up to six thousand dollars the bonus for the fans challenge John Holloman won 3,000 in the second 100 lapper this year. Nobody won it in the last one. So this is up to 6,000. And we're watching tonight John Boy going from scratch on the field. And he's all the way up to 10th, just a little bit past halfway in this field. But it's going to get more difficult to pass cars from this point on. Absolutely. Here we are just a little under halfway through the race here. Let me do some quick math. Looks like 42 laps to go. Don't check my math there. <laughs> but we're no, just so, we're just so good at math here. Did you know that? We're just big time on math. I was told there would be none, actually, so that was the problem. Well, who told you that? Matt Roper or something? <sighs> Jeez. I don't think he does much math either. I think we all bail out of it if we can. <laughs> So it's widely known that Tim Brown is the master of this division right now. Um, but there's two 10-time champions in second and third with he, he and Burt Myers. Uh, Tim Brown has 94 wins, okay? Nobody's ever won 100 wins here at Bowman Gray Stadium. So that would be a feat unto itself. He's only four wins away from the all-time win mark of any division here. Jimmy Johnson with a Y, not the Jimmy Johnson from Cup not the football coach formerly of the cowboys who now is a broadcaster but jimmy johnson the king of the sportsman division here with 98 sportsman wins is on top of that list tim brown right now with 94
Burt Myers with 85 uh, wins. You know, they're tied for championships, but right now Tim Brown is closing in on that mark. What a feat that would be. Wow. In a place that means so much to him and a driver that means so much to this place. And the funny thing is, like, you could see the intensity has not left Tim Brown. He lives and dies by it. There's people that love him, and there's people that despise him. And it's mainly because of that ultra intensity that he has. You could look at that and say maybe that's part of his success, Jesse. But you even saw it down there by the tow truck watching qualifying when he was done with his run. He timed third or fourth. He wasn't that happy. No, oh, definitely not. And that, that's the quality of someone who knows how to come here and win. When you're in third or fourth and you're still not happy with how you're running, yeah, the passion's there, no doubt. The cone is out, and predictably, the number one, Burt Myers, he likes challenging, no matter who's in the lead. And you know what? He probably feels a little safer knowing that his brother's not going to probably nerf him going into turn one. They share a race shop in Walnut Cove, North Carolina, the Myers family race shop. Those cars are next to each other all week. Gary's in the shop, sometimes on the side of the shop, smoking his cigs. <laughs> but uh, Bert works full-time in the race cars. Jason has a full-time job that comes in and works on them at night. And right now, they're side-by-side -side as we restart with Richie Evans, 61 laps on the books. Side by side through the south turn they go down the back stretch. Tim Brown has a view of this brotherly battle as he looks out the front of his number 83. Side by side they go down for another lap. Burt Myers trying to hang on, but now he files in down low to not lose that spot to Tim Brown. Trouble again in turn number three. We've got two cars around. Once again, it's Joseph Bobo Brown in the Melvin Puddin Swisher entry, and I believe Danny Probst, or uh, the 16 of Chris Fleming. Hard to see the cars have pulled off. Yellow flag is out, 64 laps into this contest. And uh, what, are you, what are you seeing so far out of that four car? at the front of the field, Jesse. He's done a great job of holding position, quite honestly, especially when you have the hard-charging one car of his brother, Burt Myers, behind him. But I have to believe that uh, as, as friendly as they are and as, as much of a family as they are, as these laps tick down, Burt's not going to play nice. Winning here is everything. Yes. Yes, it is. And right now, Jason Myers is the king of the family right now up front. Burt Myers, I'd imagine when we go to the cone here, uh, the cone is coming out. Jeff Bunton gently places the orange cone gently onto the start finish line here on the front stretch. You're seeing the back stretch right now. But uh, there we go. There's the cone inside to Jason Myers, outside to Burt Myers. The same lineup as before, except for the 104 car now moves into fifth position over Bobby Labonte. The lights are out on top of the modern Chevrolet pace car, charging side by side, getting ready for this restart on lap 66. The Myers brothers coming around turn four to take the green lap 67. Burt Myers still trying to make a move on the outside, but his brother Jason doing a phenomenal job of holding him off. And there you see he the 83 in closing him. him in. That was a pretty good charge, Jesse, for, for Burt Myers here on the outside, almost testing the waters to see what he might be able to do later on in the event. Jason now stretching his legs out in the front of the field. Single file through most of this pack right now. 69 laps now clicking off lap 70 on the books. 30 laps to go for this 100 lap contest. The big dogs are out front. Jason Myers, 
Burt Myers, the number 83 of Tim Brown, the top three synonymous with success here at Bowman Gray Stadium. I don't know if you saw on that last restart, the 25 of Bobby Labonte hit the outside wall. Oh. Coming to the green and is now sitting in eighth. You wow. said it. You said it during qualifying. He was getting real close to that wall coming around turn four, and it looks like it finally came back to bite him. Yeah, exactly what you said. Out to bite him. This wall here, especially coming off of turn number four, it gets really tight. And from the driver's seat, I've never been in a modified and having that big wheel sticking out there. But... I mean, I, I raced a mini stock here, whatever, but but in a legend's car, but it's it sneaks up on you. It literally juts out the wall in turn number four there by that beer garden. And Bobby Labonte was pushing the edge in qualifying. We saw him. I swear you couldn't put a piece of loose leaf paper between the tire and that. Oh, right there. Danny Bones, some contact back behind there from the front bumper of the number 79 of James Savali with 25 to go. We're widening him out to show you the multiple car battle right there. You see Jonathan Brown going around Randy Butner. He's going for the fan challenge for the extra $6,000 if he can make it to the top four. And he's marching his way up there right now. Wow, it is incredible what he's been able to do tonight, gaining position here. It is not easy to gain positions in a modified on a quarter-mile track. I'm sitting here trying to make a six <laughs> with my hands. I'm not good at charades. I just counted while you were talking. The dude's up to sixth place. This is a run. This is awesome. That's incredible. Just two more positions, and he can pull off a $6,000 gain. And there is no understating what $6,000 can do for these teams. Oh, boy. There's a car that has woken up from a nap. And it's a 104 car of Brandon Ward. He is hot on the bumper of the 83 car. Brandon Ward fifth position. in the points right now. Oh, boy. Some bumper tag right there. James W. Savali, the 79, underneath the 65 of bad to the bone, Danny Bone. Give that position to Savali. But no, battling back on the outside. Don't mind that since it's a 30-year-old car. He's battling his heart out there. Savali takes the spot. Meanwhile, the four of Jason Myers is quickly pulling away from his brother in second. As the laps tick down, just under 20 laps to go now. Just to do some housekeeping, the ninth position there for James Savali. Let's give you a rundown here. In first, Jason Myers. Second, Burt Myers. 83 laps on the book. The 83 is in third. The 104 of Brandon Ward in fourth. Fifth, John Holloman in the 69. The 22 up to six. Needs two more spots. So good six grand. The number five of Randy Butner in seventh. Eighth, Bobby Labonte. Ninth, James W. Savali. And tenth, Brian Lofton. That's your top ten as they run. 85 laps on the board. Now, if you look, the 83 is trying to reel back in. Burt Myers, the leader, about to hit some lap traffic here. This could play into this plot of this 100-lap affair. And as a reminder, just six points separate the 83 of Tim Brown and the one of Burt Myers when it comes to the overall championship run. So every single position tonight matters. And then John Holloman right there, we're showing him right out because the charging car behind John Holloman is that 22 car trying to pick up an extra $6,000. The race within the race. Jonathan, John Boy, as he's affectionately known, charging from the rear of the field, now trying to battle for the fifth position. He's on the back bumper of John Holloman, the fourth. The fans have to appreciate that charge right there. The 104 car now pulling into the back bumper of the number 83. Ten laps to go. They're clicking by fast now. This is go time. I'll tell you what, John Boy is probably praying for a caution. I think everybody is except for the four car. Jonathan Brown on the back bumper still. 
of the very hard to pass number 69, slowing that car off of exit of the corner and keeping it down on the bottom. That's a very defensive posture by that young race car driver, a veteran, a, a, a veteran way of approaching a corner here at Bowman Gray Stadium. Hey, slow down in the corner, get it turned, make sure if you're going to get hit, you're going to get hit square. That's kind of what you need to do in these race cars here at Bowman Gray Stadium, and he's doing that masterfully, holding off John Boy right now on that 22. Seven laps to go. He's showing you that battle on the field because it is one of the best battles on this racetrack right now. Jonathan Brown needs two spots for an extra $6,000 bonus. That red and white number 22 on the back bumper of one of the hottest drivers at Bowman Gray Stadium. John Holloman in the fourth in that black and pink number 69. Just five laps to go in this modified race, and it is, like you said, it's go time. It's past go time at this point. Oh, look at the hands on Holloman hanging on to that race car. Brown got into the back of him. Oh, he's doing he's doing some Michael Jackson glove moves in there, dancing around. That car was sideways out of turn number four. John Holloman hanging on to that machine. Here comes the chrome horn again to the back bumper. Now is he going to give him the outside? He does so. Brown to the outside. What a battle within a battle, but the battle is also heating up with two laps to go at the front. Here comes Burt Myers. Where did he come from? Coming to the white flag right now. Jason Myers has the lead, but he has to deal with lap traffic. Here comes Burt Myers to the bottom. Redman, Garrett Redman playing the pivot point. Off of turn number four, it's a Myers 1-2, and it's Jason Myers who takes the checkered flag give you a look at that 22 right now trying to take that fifth spot and he fails to do so what a win for jason myers pure domination his 35th win in the modified division win number 52 for jason myers The Myers family, the most successful family here in motorsports at Bowman Gray Stadium. His family tree, consisting of Bobby Myers, the great Bobby Myers, the great Billy Myers, their father, Gary Myers, Bert, and this guy right here, Jason Myers, 229 wins for this family tree here at Bowman Gray Stadium. And now he carries the checkered flag that this Myers family so familiarly does around this great oval.